going to switch up my presentation just a little bit in the order, only because I want to piggyback off of what Adriana just said. Um, CareSync is a company that exists because of rare disease. Our chief operating officer, there's actually a team of us that worked together since about 2004. We built an electronic medical record. We sold it to a publicly traded company. And then we um, kind of went off and did our thing. A lot of people went on to the other company. Some of us started building a platform to do other things. And in June of 2010, our former um, head of development and now current chief operating officer, her daughter was diagnosed with juvenile dermatomyositis, a rare autoimmune disease. There's about 5,000 children that have it. Um, and she was a nurse, is a nurse, and she was also the head of IT healthcare development. And she could not manage all of the information, um, all of the different providers, the specialists, super specialists all over the country, NIH, all these things, she was not able to manage it. And it was kind of like an aha moment, like what the heck, if I can't manage all of this with my education and my clinical experience, then who can? So that's kind of the birth of CareSync and that platform that others of us were working on turned into kind of the base for the CareSync platform. So let's get through some of the boring HIPAA and fun stuff about records and get through the right stuff and then I can share a little bit more about what we're doing. Um, so, like you know, you need access to your important medical records, and when you have a rare disease, it's even more important because each little piece of data it becomes pertinent to you, becomes pertinent to your providers, and let's be frank, as well-intentioned as providers are, communicating isn't always a thing that happens. Um, so multiple specialists, complicated symptoms, super specialists at NIH and other centers of excellence um, take a bunch of medications, and then your providers don't always communicate in time. Um, because of HIPAA, you have a right to your medical records. Um, you can view the originals at the office typically, or you can request copies of the records. Um, you're allowed to request records on behalf of yourself, um, your children, although there are some exceptions, and anybody else who has made you their designated rep. Um, that's done by submitting and writing, I would like to give Courtney Larned permission to get so-and-so's records. Um, the exceptions for children is that um, the child has consented to medical care and parental consent is not required in your state. They do not have to give you access to those records. Um, if the child gets medical care at the direction of a court, that would be a unique situation where the parents would not have right to the information. And if the parent does agree that the minor and the medical provider can have a confidential relationship. So those are just things to keep in mind in terms of, especially as children get a little bit older and have confidential conversations with their, with their doctors. Um, um, some records may be withheld. Typically, this has to do with mental health. Um, psychotherapy notes do not have to be shared. Um, if the doctor is compiling information for a lawsuit, they do not have to share it under the law. And any medical information that the provider believes could reasonably endanger your life, your physical safety, or the physical safety of someone else. Um, how much will it cost? Um, unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you on that. It's different in every single state. Um, also, the term reasonable, and it always has kind of air quotes around it, um, is what is required, but it's typically 50 cents to a dollar a page. I believe that's ridiculous, but it is to cover administrative costs that they have. Um, and then some offices don't charge. A lot of times the specialists and super specialists will give you that information to take back to a primary care doctor. Um, under HIPAA, and this started as of January 1st, you're actually required to get access to your records within 30 days. Um, it used to be longer. Cool thing about this is some states are a little more forward thinking on this and they have even stricter requirements. California, for example, um, you have 15 days to get um, copies of your records and they have to give you access to view them within five days. Um, if you want to go and get your medical records, um, there's a lot of steps you need to know. You kind of need to know the process for the specific provider, so I recommend that you call them and you ask them what they want to do. Um, they will also want a request in writing, so you'll want to include information like your name, email address, and the medical records number if you know it. Um, some of them will require a social security number. Really what they're trying to do is to get as much information to make sure they are giving you the correct information. Um, records do not have to be released to you under the HIPAA law prior to payment, however. If they require payment, you have to pay it. They can say you have to pay it before they'll give it to you. Um, let's see, complete form. So yeah, so then you make the request in writing. You include all the info that they require. Most of them have a HIPAA authorization release form that they would ask for you to complete, um, and that would be who you're going to release the information to. So if you're having it sent to you, 
you would put you if you're having a sent to a specialist or a different doctor. Um, and then you specify if you want copies or to have an in-person viewing of the original medical records. Um, that typically would be if you were worried about errors or if you wanted to see the original specifically if you were getting into legal stuff um, more than anything. So, uh, switch pages here. Um, they also recommend that you be as specific as you want. So if you've only seen this doctor for two years, don't request all records for the last 10 years or anything like that. So the more, they kind of triage the requests as they come in. So if you tell them why you're requesting the records, I have an appointment at NIH next week and I need this information, they will give it to you faster than if you're like, I want everything you've ever done on me, just for the heck of it. Um, so our team, that's been our experience, is they really do triage how it happens and then they, you know, the speed of which you get it, it goes from there. Um, what if my request is denied or my records are not complete? Typically, if there's an error in your medical record, it is an honest mistake, a simple omission, or in the EMR days, a lot of copy-paste happens. Um, as we collected records for some of our clients, actually my best friend asked for care sync for her birthday. We're getting older and I guess starting to care about this stuff an awful lot. But, um, the first record she got in said she'd had a mammogram at 28 years old and had family history of breast cancer, none of which was accurate. So it was clearly a copy-paste error that ended up in her chart. And funnily enough, my sister apparently had a mammogram when she was 17, according to her medical records, which would be another error. So it is really important to see what's in there. But typically, an error like that is not on purpose, and it's easy to correct. Um, you can make a written request to your provider and ask that they um, change the record. Um, technically, they don't have to change the actual record because it is a legal document, but they do have to um, put an amendment in the chart. If you are having troubles with that, there are really two channels you can go to put in a request um, or complaint. So you could file with the Office of Civil Rights under Health and Human Services. And I put the information there, but I actually have a link that you guys can go to with the whole thing to download if you're interested in more in-depth information on anything that we're talking about today. The second option is to go to the state medical board. Um, I did a little bit more research on this because I don't know much about it. And everything I found said that's kind of the, not the way you would go about it as um, they take a long time. The average time to address a complaint in most states in one study was 2.6 years. So if you're trying to get something done, <laughs> if you're trying to get something done, I did find it from a healthcare law website, so hopefully it is legit information. But, but if you're trying to accomplish something, that's a roadblock. So, uh, so my advice would be to go to Health and Human Services. I actually know quite a few people there, and, and they will, you know, most of them will bend over backwards to make right on it. Um, yes, 2.6 years, that's what I have. So now it's like, I've got them, now what? So however you do go and get your records, um, you need to create a plan for organizing and storing them. Um, are you gonna store them in binders, bankers boxes in the trunk of your car? Are you gonna get a personal health record or another technology solution to store them? And if I can drill anything home today, discover what's in them. So get your data, get it in a format that you understand it, but discover what's in it. Discover those errors. My colleague that I was telling about with the rare autoimmune disease took years to get a diagnosis, years. And in 2005, she'd had her tonsils out, and they actually had found traces of autoimmune that was just never conveyed to Amy. So had she had that information sooner, she might have had a diagnosis much sooner and treatment much sooner. Um, so discover what's in them, review them for errors and omissions. Um, we, as the parents, as the family members, we are the best source of information at the end of the day. We are there every single day. We are there taking care of our family, and we are the best storytellers when it comes to telling the story of health. So remember that. So even if you do feel a little bullied by a provider or that your information is not relevant, it actually is probably the richest source of information for the doctor to put the story together. Um, report errors, like I just said before. Um, get them taken care of and get the amendment, amendments fixed and make sure you communicate them to your other doctors. You know, if you have a nephrologist and there's errors in that chart, you really would want all your other providers to have the update on that as well. And then make your plan for sharing with them. Um, kind of build that partnership. I know you touched on partnerships a bunch, but I really do believe that you can, if you go in engaged and empowered with information, you can establish a really strong relationship with your doctors and, and they really will trust the information that you bring as being more valid than you might feel in typical situations. So I told you a little bit about our story, so we can skip over that, but um, this is what we do. So 
we go and we have built web and mobile applications for iPhone and Android. And as we were building them, we realized that the reason a lot of the traditional personal health records haven't done so well and have not had huge adoption, and seen with the portals, actually, um, is because it's a lot of work and because getting your records is incredibly overwhelming. Um, so we actually hired a whole team. Um, there's a call center in central Florida. Um, and we go and get your medical records. Um, it's not easy. We actually lose money on a lot, of, a lot of the patients that we get records for. We don't on others. But we get all of your records. We scan the complete ones in. Um, but then we actually go through and we transcribe each past medical visit and build them out in the CareSync software. So all of your past medical visits are basically put in as appointments, but they're just past tense. And the plan and assessment from each of those visits is typed up or copied and pasted, electronically brought in where it could be. So health conditions, medications, allergies, all of that information is put in a structured and codified fields, which if you're not techie, basically means it comes from databases, not from I typed the wrong letters in the spelling of this medication. So you start typing up medication, it will come up in the software and you can choose it. It will recommend which doses are typically the doses that you do. So they go and they put all that information in and what that actually ends up doing, the, the what you get from it, is your health timeline. Um, and the health timeline is actually, it's a nerdy way of actually being really cool. But it is a timeline um, of your past medical history and um, you're able to filter it by health condition you're able to filter it by date range. So if you see one doctor four times a year, um, you could give everything for just the last three months. But you're able to, say, instead of showing up with your big binders or your banker boxes in a cart, you are able to show a three-page summary of your current status as well as the relevant past medical status. So here's a picture of the health timeline. So you can kind of see it goes down. Um, the provider notes, that's the information that our team would go and put right into the document. Um, you have your whole family on the left, so right now we know we're in Lucy Carter's account, but then you can just see there's all the medications that are linked to that, um, any documents that might be linked to the appointment. And there's also a place for you to put your own notes. You've referenced having your list of questions and making sure you get them answered. We have tasks built in there, and not everyone uses the tasks the same way, but I actually use the tasks to create an agenda for my doctor's appointments. And I check them off as we go, and I don't leave the room until, <laughs> nobody leaves the room until, until my questions are answered. But, but I leave feeling confident, and I leave documenting some of these things, because a lot of the times, I mean, the statistics are 50% of the people forgot what the doctor said by the time they get to their car. Um, even more so if you get a shocking diagnosis. You go about it, you're like, wah, wah, wah. You don't hear anything else other than that. Um, so, so we have built tools. We've leveraged the technology that's in our phones already. You can leverage the voice recorder um, in your phone and actually record the doctor's care plans. Um, so then it's part of the record. And family on the other side of the country, we talk about social networks. Um, we think the family is the original social network. So by having your family involved, your family and care team, you know, dad can hear the records if he wasn't able to be at the appointment. Grandma can hear them, um, hear what the doctor said, and everyone has access to that. Um, and I will tell you that I was actually shocked when we did this, I was like, ah, doctors aren't going to go for that. They've actually loved it. They've actually been really, really embracing of recording the instructions and having the patients do what they said. So the other thing our team does, we'll actually schedule appointments for you. We're kind of moving a little more toward a concierge-esque business um, where we schedule appointments and put in tasks and care coordination type of things. So if you're managing complicated conditions and things like that, it could help just carry some of that caregiver burden. Like I said, we have some pretty cool technology. Um, we have really, really easy to use apps. Um, web, um, iOS, and Android. The web is great for putting in some data and stuff like that. But one thing I actually did not emphasize, which I probably should have really emphasized, is that it's super, super, super easy to start. So all you have to do is put in your doctors, and we have a database of almost all the doctors in the United States are already in there. And then you hit a button that says Request Records. And um, you digitally sign that HIPAA authorization release form. You can use your mouse, or if you're on your phone, you use your finger, and send it. And then that's it. Our team does the rest of the work, and you get notifications as records come in and your account's being populated. Um, so Cam Care Manager is kind of the tool with all the appointment tools and the um, tasks and all of that, so people can collaboratively um, participate. I actually recently was doing a demo and I happened to be in my live account instead of a demo account. So I typed in a note, like a task, like pick up 
prescription at CVS for, for Benjamin, and then like an hour later, I get a response on the comment, on the task that said, I went to CVS, but they said they didn't have anything for him. Was he waiting for something? So it really is social. My husband had hopped on there and, and gone to the drugstore to go do it. So, so it is actionable things, and people really do get involved. So, so silliness aside, I felt really bad that I wasted like 45 minutes of his day. Um, but, but it does work. People really do want to do that. We've had a lot of people go through, if you're going through a series of treatments, um, one colleague went through radiation, and she had 20-something of them, and she put each of them in as tasks, and each time she went, she checked one off, and her family cheered her on and gave her social support. So really, you can really socially encourage. Um, you can bribe. We have medication reminders and adherence now. So I actually, my son has to take medicine each morning, and I bribe with Legos. So if he gets 31 days in a row <laughs> of tracking his medications, then he'll get some Lego prize at the end of it. So, so there's some gaming you could do, and s social psychology things that you can do. To, to help with the adherence and all of that. Um, one of the things that's coming out in August that I'm really excited about, but I'm also a super data nerd, is um, tracking devices. So I have my Fitbit, my Jawbone, uh, I am actually wearing both of them right now. Um, but any of those scales, things if you're tracking weight, blood pressure, any of those types of things, we're integrating with those wearables. So that takes that kind of behavioral data overlays it with the clinical data and then the family data on top of it. So it's really this rich source of information that then you're then able to share with doctors. Um, like I said, we have some concierge services. We do appointment booking. Um, we are really proud of the statistic that 98% of the appointments we've booked have been attended. Um, so I don't know if it's just to put it on my calendar and I show up kind of thing because that's how I am, but, but people are getting their appointments. Um, We've had a lot of people who go to super specialists and when they need to go, they need to come with the concise packet of information. And NIH actually has a huge cancellation rate because people aren't able to get prepared before that. So, so we're working with them and a lot of their patients to get them prepped for, the, for their residents and the care coordination around that. Um, here's some of our just great successes that we've had so far. 64% um, of our PLUS members have avoided duplicate tests. Um, so far, the longest record we've had is 4,089 pages. Um, that one was ugly. Um, oldest record is from 1966, and the most providers any of our patients have, and this is probably about a month old, so I, hopefully it's still current, was 49. So the, the members who use the services are nine times more engaged in their health. There's nine times more activity in their account, and one in three found significant medical errors in their charts. So that would be, I have a mammogram, or there was, um, autoimmune traces in my tonsillectomy, things like that. So, and then with Kerosene Plus's help, 84% remembered their post-visit tasks. Um, our doctors, we didn't know at first if we were going to tick the doctors off or not, um, but they've, they've been thrilled. I actually left my last doctor's appointment with a high five, so <laughs> we'll count that as a win. Um, and then Kerosene has simplified a very chaotic life. We have recently had a post on our Facebook page, and it was a picture of two banker boxes that were carried in the trunk next to a picture of her iPad. Um, so, so it's a much more portable way to carry your information around. Um, so for the sake of full disclosure, there are other apps and services available. Um, Zwina Health, I think, is really our biggest competitor in this space. Um, they do not have their own technology. They use Microsoft Helpful technology, um, has a mo mobile web browser for web access for Android, and I do believe they have an actual iPhone application. Um, I think they cost more than we do, um, but, but they uh, seem to be a really up and coming for that. Medifile's been around a little bit longer. They, they are also a services business. Um, CareZone does not have services, but I think they're a fantastic PHR. Um, we, I would say we're very comparable in terms of that sense of what we have to have, the medication adherence, the family collaboration, and things like that. Um, and then Blue Button is government initiative that we all have access to our information and they're working so hard to it there'll be a national campaign um, later later this summer early this fall so i think people in general not just patients are gonna really have the importance of having access to your information so blue button if you go to the blue button site it's very early right now i just went on it a couple days ago before i put this together and um i live in baltimore and i had i pulled in i typed in maryland and right now medstar and hopkins were the only two on there university of maryland isn't isn't feeding that information into it yet, and Hopkins still isn't feeding that much. So it'll be very fascinating to watch how this rolls out over the next few months and years, but there are a ton of apps, and I'm happy to provide some of the names if you want to play with those and see getting that information in that way. 
Um, I should point out that for Kersing, our apps are actually all free to use, download, sign up for, um, and then we only charge for the services and pretty affordable, all things considered. But we'll go and get medical history for $99. Um, but like I said, not a marketing pitch. There are actually a lot of, a lot of apps out there um, that are doing a really good job with this. Um, and that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions about any of the legal stuff or Kersing stuff? So the app actually is built on a fax server, which fax, fax, um, but it is still America's favorite healthcare device, I would say. Um, so what, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make it very, very simple. So you've now, say we've built out your complete health timeline and you want to send in the last three months. Um, all you do is, and I don't have internet, but I'm happy to show you, um, we, you filter out what you want, you hit share in the top right, you can either print out a copy or you can hit the fax button and it will fax it off to the provider that you choose. So um, you can set the system up to automatically send something the night before. So it's sitting on the, the fax machine. And I actually have a story that has nothing specifically to do with you, but in a general one. But I actually fell running in January. And I broke a bunch of bones in my hand and ended up having to have surgery to rebuild a finger in February. And I have a neuro condition that is well managed. And the anesthesiologist who I met 15 minutes before my procedure kind of wigged out. He was just like, I don't feel comfortable doing this. And I was actually able to share everything he knew. This was at Maryland and not Hopkins where my neuro is. And I was able to share everything he needed to see. I sorted by health condition and the medications that I take. And I said, it will be on this, this is from the OR. It will be on the fax machine in the nurse's station by the time you get there. And he's just like, by the end, he wanted me to hire him and come work as, like, as our chief medical officer. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty powerful. People had taken the days off from work, and he wanted to send me home, and it was not cool. So by being able to share the relevant data right from my iPhone that was almost dead because I'd spent the last three hours playing on it, but, but he had the access to the information that he needed. And, and they say 80% of diagnoses can be made with stories and not tests. So. Certainly, you know, as healthcare costs continue to go up, and I firmly agree that we really need to get into a consumer mindset when it comes to shopping for healthcare. Um, you know, if the service isn't great, go somewhere else, that kind of thing. But, but I really think the portability of this information makes it a lot easier to become a good consumer of it. What facility do you have uh, to take uh, lab results and um, um, take them in, in PDF form or some other you know, paper form that we might uh, put in there um, and um, pr produce any kind of graphs or charts or anything that, you know, most of us have kids that go for labs uh, on a very regular basis and we would like to see trends. Yes, that is part of the behavioral and tracking information that's coming in will be really the visualization around a lot of that data. So right now the data is getting put in there. We kind of build in medical buckets, if that makes sense. But, but actually the visualization around that is coming in the next build specific to that kind of thing. Um, okay, well thank you, Courtney. Thank you very much. It was, I'm humbled to be here.